gorgeous, I'm the Fairy Voice Mother and today, by extremely popular request, I will be reacting to MB14 with his LA Cup Worldwide Showcase. The people have spoken! The theme on our Patreon poll this week was beatboxing and out of all the performances listed, this one won. One, 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 two, one. So this guy apparently is the best ever in the whole world at looping, or one of them anyway. So I'm sure, as you seem to be sure, that this is going to be right up our streets, collectively. Whenever I'm about to watch a beatbox performance, I get this like feeling inside, like an anxious excitement. My body knows it's about to do things in response. That doesn't make any sense at all, does it? Apparently he was on Britain's Got Talent just now as well and he got a gold buzzer or something. I don't know what that means, but I assume it's better than the silver buzzer. Gold buzzing goodness coming our way. <laughs> Oh, amazing. See how seamlessly he managed to build that loop. It didn't even sound real. There were no breaks in his voice at all as he was stuck in that harmony. Something to be aware of with live looping is that if you make a mistake, you are f the coordination you need to trigger the loop record and then play it back and all that stuff it is kind of one of those because you've got to be thinking one thing, singing another and then tapping something else. There must just be so much traffic going on in his mind but he's just a very good traffic controller and he's able to do everything all at once. Hey! Okay, there is... Okay. It's so fascinating the way that he moves his fingers on the mic. So, whatever instrument this is, some kind of... Easterny flute. Those finger positions perhaps correlate. It's potentially like a little bit of a bunching up of the tongue to get that kind of hissy sound. And then a kind of twangy vocal production there. And the way he does the thing where it goes up the note, he changes technique there. So his voice gets thinner. The way he raises his eyebrows to kind of encourage that mode two transition. So we've got mode one, which is a like, uh, main talking strong voice. And then our mode two, which is like a, uh, and it would have maybe been easier to control if he did, uh, but he didn't. It was a thinner sound at the top. It's things like this that make these sounds sound so impossible. Things that just go way above what a singer would choose if they wanted to do something naturally and easily. And so by changing it so quickly... That's not singing! And it really helps us buy into this being like a magic trick or an illusion. These very subtle and unexpected tone changes. Something I want you to notice here is how relaxed his throat is and also how bloody huge it is. You know I love a big neck. If you've got more space, there's just more to manipulate. So that's the flute thing. I mean, it makes sense, you know, a flute and a singing voice, they're not too far apart. Just an instrument that you blow wind through, either here or here. But the string thing, just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> 
And his arm's in the front of his mouth, which is very frustrating because I want to see right in that. I see. Okay, I got a little glimpse of his lips. So the lip shape doesn't tell us what component is moving inside of his mouth. I suspect it's the tongue, but anyway, it doesn't tell us that. But what it does tell us is the shape of the vocal tract, which is crazy. But when you put the lips in a certain position, it shapes the tube en route to the lips. <laughs> Gives this this kind of funnel, kind of like, you know, the end of a trumpet where it's all like, <laughs> the attack of the sound is the most mysterious part. It would be quite a sharp attack from the tongue somewhere, which would perhaps rule out the back because grr, 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 there's more weight back there to move. And the tip of the tongue is obviously more light and flexible. He might be curling the tongue back kind of thing. I don't bloody know. What is that little sound effect? I assume he's not doing that with his bloody vocal tract as well. Oh my goodness, that bend. I'm not surprised that he's so good at this type of singing in the mode two register with so much resonance and control. And that backwards sound helps us to control the sound to be really thin and light, which is why he can hit that note as high as he could. When he moves it to more of an This E sound is a little bit fuller and suitable for the lower end of this mode two realm. And I'm not surprised he can do it because he's already been doing it when he does the little that. It's the same vocal technique in here. And when he did the flute sound at the beginning, he's also It's the same vocal setup. So he's very, very good at thinning out his vocal folds. This uses a muscle called the cracothyroid muscle. He's managed to navigate this mode two realm and master it. Getting those vocal folds not only delicate and thin, but closing, which is why it's so resonant and which is why it's not what you would call a falsetto sound, which is more of a <laughs> this is so amazing. People that have been classically trained would have an advantage because they use this mode all the time in a strong way. Um, but you can get started yourself. I'm about to hit you with a vocal tip. <laughs> a really nice way to train it if you're not used to singing up there and your falsetto is really breathy is to do some wee sounds like wee, 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 wee. The little wah gives you a little bit of a push. And if you still can't do that and it's sounding like wee, then try a fairy sigh which is like, ah, 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 if you can get that connection, you can strengthen that from ah, ah, ah. One day later. Good morning. The camera just decided to stop working yesterday. It just forgot how to camera. I don't know anything about cameras, but when it doesn't turn on, I know that I can't film anymore. Apparently my hair also decided to stop working overnight as well. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe it was a conscious choice to go from the bow and then the bow and then singing because that would have allowed his voice to warm up to that position. Maybe working like a semi-occluded vocal tract exercise. Just when you warm your voice up with an obstacle in front of your vocal tract, whether it be your tongue, your lips, they're a brilliant way to set the correct breath pressure for certain modes of your voice. And so he's kind of managed to integrate those warm-ups into this piece. If he's that knowledgeable about music and vocal use, as he obviously is, I wouldn't be surprised if that uh, composition in that order was done intentionally. When someone transforms themselves into a 
before your very eyes. How is this your face? Maybe they're like enchanted, petrified or something. That would make more sense. Such an amazing creative use of a loop station. Swelly kind of drone underneath and then these typically like harmonic minor type scalic patterns over the top but that drone usually stays the same whereas in a lot of western music the chords will change quite regularly underneath and also there's no beats in it yet. It's just box. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know. Oh. <laughs> oh, stop it. different harmony parts that he layered. He nailed them all perfectly the first time. Four of those would require four very different vocal placements. Usually they take a little second to get into. You might need to do a little drill. But no, he managed to put everything in the position perfectly. In the space of zero seconds. Because there's so many layers, there's a lot to go wrong. If you record in two harmony parts, you know, one of them's a little bit flat and doesn't really matter, no one's gonna notice, there's still a lot of space. But because there's four, if one or more of those goes a bit dodgy, it's gonna be like the end of a game of Jenga. The shift, the entire the shift. Oh, and there it is. <laughs> And he's using all the same kind of Egyptian scales. So even though we've got beats now, it's still... Stop! No! just swooped from east to west like Superman. That was exquisite. So the first time he got his beats in, we still didn't leave that eastern-y, Arabian-y, Egyptian-y vibe with the scales and with the timbre of those drums. And all of a sudden we got like a big old kick and then we got more stuff. Shall we listen to it again? Because I actually don't remember, it was all a blur. It was so smoothly done, I don't know exactly how we got here. Even little things like sound he put in might be more west than east. I don't know, that's sort of in the middle. <laughs> and now. Okay, we had a little swoop. That was him ascending. Cape on, swooping. This kind of thuddy kick is definitely the first step. Or is it the second after the swoop? It's the second. The snare build up is another classic thing that you would usually only hear in like hip hop style music. <laughs> and we know it's a snare, not only because it sounds exactly like a snare, you would never guess this is a human, but he decides to just let you know visually. And I love that about him. He fully embodies all of the instruments he recreates. It's kind of like he pays his respects. It's like, remember when you needed a stick? or a shaker or a flute. Yeah, that's cute. It's like this super evolved human paying respects to his ancestors who needed instruments. Hey! Oh, it's the, oh, it's the, it's the bass drop. 
But all of the beats now are gradually, slowly but surely, becoming hip hop. Like the clothes and open hi hats. Algorithms quite simple, track and join the point is to feel the taste of that supple that's a hammer not a friend, my alter ego ain't shit, so you don't know me. Well let me introduce you to my barrel, you can And now the pitched Eastern instruments have gone. And if we started the performance here, it would be a hundred percent hip hop and his rapping. Supple that's a hammer, not a friend, my alter ego ain't shit, so you don't know me. Well, let me introduce you to my barrel. You can jump from the audience straight to the stage. You just pick like your hands up and let me handle what's next. If you can't recall the words, I'm gonna feel in the flank. Close your eyes if you're not even be feeling the face. You gotta get over your boundaries. Sweat through some calories. Vocal energetic, you can call me human battery. We're dangerous, destroying the microphone. You need our sound like alcohol. You can call me Al Capone. Writing down those pauses, I created an odyssey. A wide world with real empires, mostly playing hand and sick. I don't really have much to say, I just need a break. You know when you just feel that feeling that your heart rate has increased? Is he saying across the D? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Like a fry scream. Oh! It must be a fry scream. I can't think of what other tissue can do that kind of harsh sound. <laughs> Fascinating. This kind of ah, uh, and then you stiffen the vocal folds and work on creating a little compressed environment in there to amplify that and this kind of static effect just builds and builds and builds. You can start practicing this by going between these two sounds. And then eventually you'll build it to sound really, really screamy. And it doesn't hurt at all. It's actually quite a relaxing thing for your vocal folds to do. It could be that. I've only ever heard and used fry screams in the context of metal. But of course, extreme vocal techniques are not reserved for metal. I'm learning this more and more every day. By the way, the different kind of wow, you can control the perceived pitch of that fry scream just by dropping your larynx and then lifting it. But it's actually the same function in there. <laughs> To those drums for a second. Oh my god. Wait, that pitch bent. Good songs finish with a trumpet. <laughs> that little vibrato. What this is anatomically is a kind of vibrato, a mix between laryngeal, like movement of the larynx, and diaphragmatic, movement of the breath. Because you hear the way it goes really above the pitch, like... <laughs> That's how we know there's breath involvement, because if it was just a normal laryngeal vibrato, it would be more like... <laughs> like the notes would go 
a little bit more below and there would be less fluctuation in them in general. I think that's what would separate him from being amazing to being like considered best in the world is little details like this. That's fucking like incredible. Oh my god. All right, I'm definitely here in the next one. I've not had enough. Merci. Ah! Is he French? I guess so. Is this what I think it is? Does anyone else think of the Weird Al Yankovic version every time? As I walk through the valley where I harvest my grain, I take a look at my wife and realize she's very plain. But that's just perfect for an Amish like me. You know I shun fancy things like electricity. At 4.30 in the morning I'm milking cows. Jebediah feeds the chickens and Draco plows. Fool, and I've been milking and plowing so long that even Ezekiel thinks that my mind has gone. I'm a man of the land. That's enough. Like and subscribe for the full cover version. I'm joking. Am I? Am I joking? All right, sorry. My mind went somewhere. I didn't want it to go. Okay, so let's just talk about compression. Because that's far more relevant. See, on paper, right? That's just an R. But it's not, is it? And the reason it's not is because he's compressing the space. This is the kind of area we use for throat singing. That sort of thing. And we also use it when we want to make overtones as well. It creates a really non-singy sound, which again is the whole point because he wants to, I assume, lay his singing on top of this. And if everything sounds too singy, it's just gonna sound like an acapella cover. So by really manipulating the space so that his voice is here, as opposed to here, it will do that. <laughs> Definitely a little bit of tongue retraction as well because that will further filter the space And the cool thing about tongue retraction is once you pull your back of your tongue down You can feel it if this ridge gets harder because this is your tongue by the way it sits all the way down here Retracted pushing down on the larynx you still have the tip of the tongue free to do a bunch of Whatever you want to do endless possibilities. It's a lovely tomba. It really is tamba tomba. I still don't know how to say that word tombe <laughs> It's just instantly, he goes from very compressed to which is the opposite, right? Lifted soft palette at the back, oh, lots of bright, brightness. So beautiful. Now we've got another reason why he did that compression with the uh, because he wanted this really muted subby bass be like which is obviously going to occupy all of the low frequencies so the lower notes that he was doing before by compressing them in the way that he did for example Without that compression, it would have been like, ah, which was obviously very open and warm and low and would have conflicted with this bass sound he's designed.
chooses his singing voice. Because someone like him can sing probably in any way he wants, you know? He's like, do I fancy a bit of opera? Do I want a bit of hip hop? Do I want a bit of twang? Do I want a bit of nasal, a bit of oral? Gosh, it's like a full buffet of vocal sounds to choose from. That must be hard. Pretty like a bump, you know? I like that little bit of Lots of passion in his singing voice. Lots of passion in everything. Walking, or you and your homies. Or you and your homies. <laughs> he just hit us with a little bit of the old Justin Timberlake, like... Okay, so he can belt, for sure, as well. I hope the next song is a Whitney Houston cover. <laughs> it could be! He could just do everything! We've got agility as well. Obviously, of course, because if you're, that's a big old thigh slap, it was a double thigh slap, just so you know. Because if you're agile enough to do all that crazy pitch bend stuff he did with the string instruments and everything before, this is nothing, a little, ah, little riff, you know. You and me. Do you know what would be so good is if he did a Linkin Park cover because you know those like little scratchy DJ sounds like always associate that with Linkin Park and because he can sing well and because he can fry scream Please if you ever see this MB, please do a Linkin Park cover. It would be so cool Okay, so we've done eight minutes now fairy folk and I think we should leave it there for today I'm not gonna listen to the other half though, cause I'll wait to see if you want me to do an analysis to it first. So let me know. That's enough mind blowing for today. Definitely up there with one of the most incredible things I've ever heard. It's not just the vast, vast array of sounds. I mean, it is largely that, but it's the fact that he can layer them perfectly instantly. And it's also the fact that he's so aware of production and frequencies, the way that he's arranged all these pieces. Arranging, production, being a string instrument, being a wind instrument, being a singer, being a beatboxer, being like awareness of, being awareness? Having awareness of drums, using a loop station. These are all different things that even if you mastered like one or two of them, it would still be amazing. So all of that, it's not normal. I hope he gets so rich and famous because the amount of time he must have spent like in his room practicing this kind of stuff, the fact that he does stuff in so many different styles and then fuses genres and all of this stuff is based on passion and taking in lots. So this is a special, special person. And I am not surprised at all about the news of his gold buzz. He'd have my golden buzz. Whatever that is. Thank you for bearing with me in my first ever two day video. It's now that time again to bring this video to a close. But before we do, let's read out today's Oracle card. We have, <laughs> some days I'm just a molecule of meh. My glasses are, I don't know where they are. Even when you look super cute and are amazingly unique, smart, funny, and lovable, you can still have times when you just feel a bit meh. Go with it, embrace the meh. What is it communicating to you? Once you know, you can shift gear from meh to marvellous. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I've enjoyed making it. If there are any singers or indeed beatboxers that you would like to see me react to, please do let me know down below in the comments as it is always my pleasure. Thank you again for everyone that voted for this performance on our Friday, what is it called? Fairy Folk Friday Patreon. If you aren't already a part of that Patreon Discord family, you can join in the little link in the description. Oh, and if you're here at the premiere, big premiere hug for you. And if you're here at any other time, then big hug for you too. I hope you have a wonderful day. I love you very much. And I cannot wait to see you again in the next video. Oh, you bastard. Gosh, it's dry. 
he was also just on golden what no i'll never get bored of the mouth unicorns ever <laughs> but anyway oh gosh why did i take my hair down back up you go actually he's not singing is he he's stringing whatever this instrument is now brighty mcbrighton <laughs> Oh, that's quick. That position for some reason triggers like a little uvula trill at the back. I try and be impartial about uvulas. I really do because it would be hypocritical for me to say that they make me gag because I love other parts of vocal anatomy. But there is something about the uvula and I don't like to describe it or refer to it that much. But it's that thing that you can see atop the back of the mouth at <laughs> it makes me queasy and I wish it didn't. Did someone just say fuck? Yeah, it sounded like they did. Is there any English people here? 